Hello folks, how's it going? So welcome to my review of One Piece Chapter 1015. Title changed and after the end of this chapter it was kind of obvious where this is going to go. Before I get into this chapter I want to make a few mentions of the recent visuals that we got in the opening of Wano in the anime. It showcases some of the players that's going to be involved in, in the raid on Higashima. Now I was under the assumption that we would probably get a new brand new opening by that point but maybe we will still a, a long ways ahead of us so we'll have to wait and see but for now we've got some visuals of members of the toby robo that we're going to be seeing very shortly and also an interesting visual of yamato which you could consider that a spoiler but considering what we've gotten with this opening already i'm not too shocked about that so it's, it's interesting though that we get players that are going to have a huge role in this raiding on Higashima and most Toby Robo are going to be going up against the Straw Hat. Well, obviously we knew Luffy was going to be rescued by somebody, we just didn't know who. So I'm glad that got resolved. We got a bunch of setup also. Let's go over the cover page with, we got Senor Pink. That was, that was kind of interesting, being carried by a stork, being mistaken for a baby. So that was kind of light-hearted fun. But boy, do things get dark in this chapter. Just for Oda to give us a reminder that Luffy's still in the ocean and he's still pretty much KO'd. And because of this, a lot a lot of the Straw Hats were kind of like, morale kind of went down. Because we see Chopper immediately be affected by this. Because he's number one see Queen with this mechanical neck. Cover him and just munch on... It looked like on his on Chopper's neck, but it's, it could be his shoulder as well. But Chopper's tearing up. It's like what you're actually thinking about. Luffy could have been defeated, and you got, you got the rest of the one that's also with Chopper hearing this. Like, what are we supposed to do now? Lose it totally, losing them morale, and that's why Kaido did this. Is because if you remember back when he KO'd Luffy off screen. When Luffy was flying off on Higashima, he did say, like, I wish I could have taken your head as proof because the others, they won't believe it and they won't start fighting. They won't give up unless they see it. But I like how things shifted to, into gear here because whilst it's going on, also Perispero and Queen, I need to, to attack Chopper again to finish him off. And again, I want to emphasize on this because I think people get the misconception. Even if you think it was... Brief and Queen was like holding back, which he confirmed like he did because it's like how disappointing you were all fired up earlier. So I thought I'd play along. Just keep in mind like he was keeping not only Queen at bay but also Perispero at bay while in Monster Point. And for what we found out, like it was for 20 minutes because when Chop we got cut the chopper again in the previous chapter, he says, I already have 10 minutes left, and we know. Caesar gave, ended up giving him a drug that extended his gigantism in Monster Point. So it wasn't a power boost, it was just point even longer. So the fact that he was able to hold his own, whether he considered Queen was holding back or not, is still very impressive. So got to give credit with credit to Chopper. Even Sanji gave props to Chopper in this chapter. It, it, in comes Sanji, epic, epic entrance for Sanji because he comes in with the Diablo Jamba. The shading on that panel was epic as hell. It kind of reminded me of what he did with Doflamingo when he was on the Sunny and then out of nowhere comes Sanji with Diablo Jamba. But he did it here with Queen, the shading and carrying Sorrow. So the Sanji fans are going to be eating good tonight. I'm saying that right now. So it's about time we got to see Sanji in action and actually get a decent fight so this we knew this was coming sanji versus queen and then the way he just like the way he just attacked queen with his diablo jamba just spinning his head around like a neck because of his long neck that was epic and then also deflecting perispero's arrows and knocking him back so like i said that was a good epic moment for sanji hope he hopefully he keeps that up and i love how so one, number one, Sanji was giving props to Chop, but at the same time, he's like, Chop is like, oh, Luf Sanji, Luffy's son is, don't cry, you idiot. We've seen this happen countless times, remember. 
all those miracles. And because of what happened by the end of this chapter, it's even more apparent now that Luke is going to make reappearance and he's going to be just as motivated, if not filling with guilt, because of what happens in this chapter with Kaido and Kinemon. It's like, leave the dino to me, and then ju and then Queen is like, oh, it's Judge's brat. So there we go. So he has a connect. We know he has some affiliation with Judge. So this is the perfect Queen versus Sanji begin. It took us a long time to get here, but we're here now. Zoro has to get patched up with Chopper because it's convenient that Zoro's there as well. I do like how Sanji's kind of put him down with that because it's like it's a it's a complete callback to what happened in Zo. Sanji's like, I'll leave this look to you, Chopper. If he recovers, he'll be worth 10 men. And then you completely hear Zoro, see Zoro saying, oh, more like 2,000 because it's a reference to Zo. Because of when Luffy said, if we get Sanji back, it'll be like having it'll be like having 1,000 men on our side. And Zoro said, well, if he's 1,000, I'm worth 2,000. And now he's like, yeah, yeah, we get it. So I, lo I love that callback. So Chopper looks like he's going to be the one to patch up Zoro, which is good because we we see King in this chapter. So we know where Zoro's, Zoro's going. So, And I like how, how they've got some of the members of the Rebels saying, oh, how can he keep going? His captain just died. And then Marco's like, yep, that's what, that's why I like him. So he, they still have faith in him. And then it's convenient we go to the castle interior floor, first floor, and... It's, be it's become a wreck because Kaido's just completely gone on a rampage here. So we see the bodies of Okiku and Kanjiro. I'm st I'm still not certain about Okiku. Kanjiro looks dead. And now, according to this chapter, Kinemon is uh, implied that Kinemon is also dead. Because Kinemon's already down. You see the both you see this other blade shattered. We knew this is gonna end up bad. So Kinemon just got wrecked. He you Kini wants to stall at this point because you see a sword stabbing in Kaido's leg. That does absolutely nothing. And we got some flashback panels to where Momonosuke is being addressed by Kinemon as to call him father to keep the facade, just to make sure that nobody knows you're related to Odin. We get some cool little panels there. It adds up to the moment of where and Kaido's like, what, what's the point in buying time? In, what's the point in trying to run? And Kaido just brings out his own little sword and then while wow, Shinobo is carrying Momonosuke away it's like boom it just stabs him it looks like in the stomach so in the words of Kaido it's not easy but sometimes you have to accept accept the feet embrace your death like a true samurai and then we got also we got also the frog that, that Shinobo was talking about it's like now we know what that was it's it like Momonosuke was like gonna use that to convey his own message to everybody else I have to tell them just like let everybody know this is Mo Kazuki Momonosuke. Luffy is still alive. He totally he told me he would definitely make it back. So panels of the Straw Hats and the key members of the Alliance of the Rebels that's the, and the fights that's taking place on Momonosuke's behalf. We see a quick, quick shot of Yamato and we know where she ends up by the end of this chapter. But so please keep fighting, even if it hurts you. You even even if you have nothing left, I implore you to keep fighting to your last breath. You see a panel of Luffy in the water in the ocean, and he's not not and he's still conveying a message. So he's like, "Momo, let everybody know I'm still gonna be Kaido because he's going to win." You see, Kaido's already cut up to Momonosuke. Then Shinobu does something to like, I guess, get away from Kaido. Then Kaido looks confused, but whilst it's going on, you also have the you have also lost crew, the Heart Pirates, and the sub actually. A, Approach Luffy. Now I completely forgot that Lost Crew was still in the ocean there, so I, I can't let that stick my mind. But I knew somebody was going to come up to save Luffy. I just didn't know who. And I also, th also thought it could be possible that he could get washed up ashore, given we saw an island by the end of the last chapter. But he still could end up on a certain island with with the Heart Pirates. So it's going to be interesting to see what role they play now. Other members of the Straw Hats, like, yep, yeah, don't give up. And you've got Kid also, which is also apparent because since he's taking on Big Mom right now. And then Atama's crying because like Big Bro's alive. Let's run straight to the Usopp and Nami are heading to the stage. And then out of nowhere, the climb attack po pole of Nami is actually speaking. It's like, oh, it's good to hear Straw Hat's okay. And then we cut to like 
the clam attacks being a homie now. So that that has to be because we saw Nami use that clam attack to try and prevent Zeus from getting pursued by Hela. That has to be that has to be Zeus turned into a homie inside of the clam attack now. So if that's the case, that's going to be interesting. Law appears out of nowhere finally. And then he's like, oh, we've been collaborating for a while. But honestly, when it comes to him, I've learned to say never say never. And kid's like, oh, Trafalgar Lord, did you come to get in my way? And then Law's like, settle down. Settle down, Eustace, yeah. As if he was referring to Straw Hat, yeah. Moogie Warrior. Don't you think we should play nice for now? So I called it. They totally going to team up against Big Mom. Again, I kind of would have liked to see this earlier, considering what we have with with Ulti and Nami. But I don't know what's going to happen with her. She could get back up. I hope she does. Just because it gives Nami something to do. Especially if you're going to highlight the fact that Climb Attack it, it, on Nami is now a homie. It has to be for a reason. So, so hopefully that's where that goes. To end the chapter, we have Kaido. Uh, keep in mind, Shinobu and Momonosuke, I, I guess, avoided Kaido. That out of nowhere comes, in comes Yamato yelling Kaido. And then Kaido's like, don't you mean father, Yamato. And then Yamato, that bond has chained me for too long. I'm here to free myself. Does that mean she's going to fight Kaido? But th at the very least, this confrontation could lead us into a Kaido flashback that we've been all wondering about. Or oh, the connection between Yamato and Kaido, and what what really led to Yamato being locked up. It can't be just like Yamato wants to be like Odin. That can't be it because if that was the case, then Kaido would have begun out of his way to try and locate Yamato. So it's gonna be very interesting to see where this leads. Like I said, this was a very good chapter of setup and actually great moments. Like for for instance, Sanji getting an incredible moment. It's been long overdue. He's finally going to get a, a tough 1v1, we, w we would hope. And then Chopper could, after he's patched up Zoro, deal with Paris Barrow. But obviously he got Nekomamushi in, in town, come on his way to fight Paris Barrow. I, I also think, it, but I think it's poetic just as if Carrot is the one to fight Paris Barrow alongside Nekomamushi. Like for all intents and purposes, we could get Yamato versus Kaido, which I've been saying for the past few chapters. Like, if that happens... With Luffy there or not, and uh, whatever happens to Yamato, that could bring up some huge character development. And if there's ever a chance for her to be an ally or even a Nakama of the Strats, this would be the fight to do it. Like, to earn her place in Luffy's good graces. Like, Luffy already trusts Yamato, but this could really put some respect from Luffy into Yamato. If Yamato goes down swinging against Kaido, and then that's where Ka Luffy's like, okay. Yeah, this is going to push Luffy over the edge. So this is a gr this could be great. This was a great move by Oda. At this moment, we could assume that King Limon is dead, which could also imply that Suru is also dead because King Limon's like, I want to survive. If we, survive. I'll reunite with Suru once everything's been taken care of. But it looks like as if right now, if you take away Kondro because he's no longer a scabbard. Kinemon is the is the first scabbard that we that appears has been has been killed off by Kaido. So I'm wondering what's going to be the case with Okiku. We don't really Okiku could also follow suit. We'll have to wait and see. But yeah, this was all in all. I thought it was a great chapter, great way of setting up certain things that we knew we thought could happen. It are now happening. This also could imply that we're close to like maybe the end of one or at three, more sooner than I thought we were because of. Because I don't see this lasting too much longer. We could cut to where Kaido and Yamato are either about to clash or about to talk to one another. And then it cuts to like the end of one Act 3 and go to where whatever's taking place in the rest of the world. Because we have we still have that to figure out yet. With Boa Hancock, Vivi and Sabo. We had that mentioned last year. Obviously, for obviously it was delayed. But this chance is making his move this year. So that has to imply something. So maybe one at four, similar to how one at three started with the beginning of, of the Kazuki Odin flashback. Maybe that's going to start with the Kaido flashback. Now I don't think that's going to be 
nowhere near as long as the Odin flashback. But we still need a kind of flashback at some point to flash out, flush out his character even more. And Yamato's. So, yeah, that was great. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. That's going to do it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like the review if you did. Hit that thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe channel for more One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks, guys. Bye.